All right, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar. I'm Charlene O'Hanlon, moderator for today's event, and I welcome you. As always, we have a great event on tap. I'm very excited about this one. But before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items we need to go over. First of all, today's event is being recorded. So if you miss any or all of the event, you will have the opportunity to access it later on. Following today's webinar, we will be sending out an email that contains a link to access the webinar on demand. And we are taking questions from the audience. So if at any time during today's presentation, you have a question for either of our speakers, please don't wait, don't hesitate. Just use the question and answer tab on your interface and submit your questions. And we'll try to get to as many as we can near the end of today's webinar. We also have an interactive chat feature on the interface, so please, I encourage you, if you have a question or a comment for our speakers uh, or anybody, uh, please go ahead and use that chat interface. Uh, we want to keep it as interactive as possible. Also, at the end of today's webinar, we are doing a drawing for four $100 Amazon gift cards, so please stick around. Hopefully, you'll be one of our four lucky winners. All right, with that, let's go ahead and kick off today's webinar, which is a supercharge enterprise application delivery with, continue, with containers and low-code platforms. Our speakers today are Ravish Dewan, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Joget, and Adrian Zarin, who is the Senior Technical Consultant at Joget. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you here with me. Thank you very much, Charlene. Okay. Uh, let's get started. I'm excited about this uh, webinar, especially keeping in mind the IT delivery outlook as it stands today. So let's start with sharing what we have on, um, you know, um, IT delivery outlook and how it's changing. So number one question that we all are trying to answer, or some of the questions that we're all trying to answer is, are old ways um, of delivery enough? Can they still, can we still deliver um, you know, what we're delivering at the pace that is needed. You know, COVID is a perfect example how it changed every single business. Whether you did good during these times or you did bad, the, the outlook for you have changed, um, believe it or not. The environment has changed. It's a completely new normal right now. And is the current pace of delivery enough? Uh, that's a question that every business users uh, or every business asks their IT teams, I need it sooner. How, what can you do uh, to deliver that soon or speed to market, if you will? So these are the things that, you know, kind of a backdrop of IT delivery as it stands today. Let me also share some stats that we collected. Um, you know, these stats are from Gartner, uh, just to quickly qualify. In 2020 median annual application development and support investment. If you consider IT spending, 35% of the IT spending is going in application development and support. Out of this 35%, you know, 52% goes in maintaining existing systems. And if you look at the rest 48%, that's the amount of money out of this 35% of IT spending is developing new applications or new projects, if you will. If I further dissect this 48%, uh, the total time for coding development and implementation activities is just 40%. The rest is all requirements, design and whatnot, right? So if I do the math uh, correctly, only a small amount of this 35%, which is just 19.2% to be precise, goes in creating new applications or so-called writing code. So you can imagine out of $100, we're spending $19 writing code and all the other activity, all the other investment is non um, you know, not related to new application development and delivery of code, you can imagine what is the amount of applications that you will be uh, you will be creating with this investment. The question now is, how can I maximize this? So as we look forward, it will definitely matter how you deliver. And how you deliver is completely changing if you look at application development environment. Everything about application developing is changing and it is changing fast. When I say fast, it is changing really fast. Let's take a look at the different aspects of application development now. You know, talk about application architecture. You might have heard about composable architecture, 
you know, this is something new that has come up with, with um, you know, by Gartner. What they are saying is your application delivery has to be, you know, uh, has to uh, reside on a app, composable app architecture. So you can reconfigure your business fast. Microservices, everyone might have heard about. Service le service less architecture, everyone might have heard about. So all these things are changing at the same time for the you know for the application delivery um, you know managers directors or or leaders so application architectures are changing second is application development tools and processes if you go back a few years you know the tools that you are using today are completely different you know we are now talking about devops delivery pipeline continuous um, you know, integration, continuous delivery, CI, CD tools, you know, rise of a citizen developer. This is a very interesting, you know, term that is coming up now uh, when you say citizen developer. On one side, we are talking about DevOps and Agile and, and CI, CD and continuous um, app dev. And then on the other side, we are talking about citizen developers who don't know how to write code. And yet they are creating applications. How are these two worlds going to, you know, come together? That's something that we need to understand um, from market standpoint. And the third thing is that even application architecture is changing. You are now talking about public cloud, private cloud, on-prem, containers, container platforms um, like OpenShift and, and Kubernetes and all. And you know, it all started with infrastructure as a code, right? So if you take a look at these three key aspects of application development, it is changing, it is, and it is changing fast. So keep there, bear this in mind that if you are not looking at some of these things from application delivery standpoint, you are going to be challenged to deliver. A quick question, though, uh, uh, since um, audience have joined across the globe, uh, would love to understand: Are you using or planning to use containers? All right, we do have the first of our two polling questions open. The question is, are you using or do you plan or plan to use containers? You can choose from yes, we are using containers. Yes, we plan to use it in the next three months. Yes, we plan to use it in the next six months or no, we don't have any plans to, uh, to use containers. You can go ahead and make your choice and uh, I will go ahead and uh, uh, stay in the background and let you continue with your presentation, Ravish, and we'll take a look at the results later on. Sure. So containers, I mean, this is something very, very interesting. And if you are talking about cloud native and you don't talk about containers, you, you have a big gap that you are trying to fill, right? And the whole idea is, why should I look at these containers? Why is it important to look at the containers now? And, and you will find what we are observing is the container adoption is moving fast. You know, on one hand, the, this whole citizen development and, and citizen uh, developer journey is moving fast. On the other hand, the adoption of containers is equally fast. And we will come to a, uh, you know, we will discuss a little bit later as to why it is important to understand both these journeys are equally important. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. But before I go there, uh, Charlene, do we have the answers? Yes, I'm closing the poll right now. And the question was, are you using or plan to use containers? A uh, full 71% said that they are currently using containers. That's great news. But the second largest percentage, 19% said no, they don't have any plans. And then the other two uh, responses uh, each came in at 5%. Either they plan to use it in the next three months or they plan to use them in the next six plus months. So. There you Excellent. go. Looks like we've got a lot of container adoption happening, which is great. Excellent. So let's let's see if you guys change the mind for these nineteen percent to at least look at the containers. Um, so let's let's talk about what is happening in the industry as well. These are some key uh, assumptions from you know Gartner's and Foresters of the world or the advisors in the industry. If you look at one of the report that Gartner has, Gartner has published about the forecast of application development and even the uh, low code application development, what, what Gartner is saying, active citizen developers at large enterprises by 2023 will be four times the professional developers. This is a significant multiples of, of just the professional developers. 
and there is a reason why this is happening because of the pace of uh, you know digitization that you need just the developers may not be able to meet the needs and and the key is leveraging developers for the right things not just getting the grunt work done those things have been very much simplified with some of these low code platforms you know second interesting fact is 70% of the new application development enterprises will use low code or no code uh, technologies and 70% of the new application development is a significant number and this is up from last year it was 60 or 65% that was the the prediction but what they are observing now is the prediction is even higher 70% of the new application development will be using low code platforms here is another one and and we are seeing that reflection you know 70% already using containers another 10 Uh, are looking to use it in near future. So, eighty percent of the audience who has joined is actually using containers. That's a significant number if you look at from adoption standpoint. And you know what what Forrester is is saying is, in twenty twenty one, forty percent of the IT teams are expected to support containers. I am not going to be surprised if this number is higher than forty percent now. And you know if you look at overall. 85% of the global organizations will be running containers by 2025 so if you are if you are in a situation wherein you have not started looking at containers i am confident that in another you know few months or another year you will be looking at the containers this is it, technology is a very interesting phenomenon and I, i i say this because it is one thing to to adopt a technology but then there comes a time when you get pushed into the technology when you are not ready do not be on that uh, on that end uh, it becomes very difficult to adopt at that time um here is a just a quick stat again from forester if you look at the adoption rate it is you know the cloud journey started and the container journey is just following that and pretty soon you know the adoption is going to you know plateau and and it's happening fast before you know it is happening for you and um you have to be prepared for that journey as simple as that so let's talk about i we talked about two key main phenomena in the industry one is the cloud native platforms you know like open shift and containers and the uh, the other one is low code platforms no code low code platforms again both of these platforms support the agility that you need supports the speed that you need for delivery let's take a look at how these platforms are making this journey easier for you or can make this journey easier for you um i want to quickly highlight a few key aspects of both low code platforms and um you know containers like open uh, platforms like openshift so uh, forrester did a quick um you know survey and they surveyed almost around 1000 people this was back in i believe 2018 or 2019 and what they found out was majority of the people who are using low code platforms they were more focused on addressing some of these key fundamental issues high cost time consuming delivery lack of flexibility and changing business environment and this changing business environment is more relevant than anything in the um, industry today you know especially with the covid and and the need for digitization you will be surprised that um there was a study published by forrester in 2020 that 70% of the organizations have still not digitized fully you know everyone started their journey and they they took diversions they are still not done yet 70% is a significant number when it comes to you know overall industry you know uh, digitization and it's it's just going to go you know the digital digitization journey is just going to be uh, has been accelerated for you now as simple as that if you did not have that on on your plan you are thinking about it right now no doubt about that and when they surveyed these customers who are using low code platforms they found out 92% of the significant or the modest improvement uh, 92% of the them stated they really got a significant or a modest improvement this is significant number if you look at it almost all of them said we were able to get improvement by virtue of leveraging these platforms right 
just a quick question uh, on that. Um, are you using or plan to use low code platforms to support citizen developers? This is, I believe, um, this was a journey earlier, whether I want to do it or not. It seems to be becoming a, a need rather than, um, you know, just a want. I want to do it or not is not a question anymore. Um, Charlene, I'll, I'll just pass it over to you. Cool. Yes, yes, absolutely. The uh, polling question should be out to you right now. The question is, are you using or plan to use low-code platforms to support citizen developers? You can choose from yes, we are using low-code platforms. Yes, we plan to use it in the next three months. Yes, we plan to use it in the next six plus months or no, we don't have any plans. So as with the other poll, I'll leave this open for you a little bit. Ravish, you can continue with your presentation and when you wanna talk about it, you just let me know. Sure. So um, citizen developer, let me just define citizen developer. Citizen developer is someone who does not know coding or may have some idea, but at the same time is able to leverage some of the low code platforms to build applications. For example, like Joget, I mean, you can drag and drop, create processes, create automation, create screens to capture data and attach those screens to the processes. That's what a citizen developer is capable of. One, one most important thing is they understand the business. They know business well, and they know the business rules. Hence, they are able to communicate better by virtue of you know dragging and dropping and building these applications. One of the things that you will find out with citizen developers is it accelerates your application development as well as innovation in your organization. There was a time when the citizen developer or, or the business users wanted to communicate what they want, but had to wait for a developer to develop an application for them or the concept. Today, they can leverage the, these platforms and you know just go faster. They can ideate and create the prototype all by themselves. I'll get to that in a minute. Charlene, do we have an update on the poll? We absolutely do. The poll is now closed. The question was, are you using or plan to use low code platforms to support citizen developers? Uh, we had 46%, the largest percentage saying, yes, we are using low code platforms. However, the second largest percentage at 38% said, no, they don't have any plan. Uh, we have uh, uh, 12% who said that they plan to use it in the next three months and 4% who said they plan to use it in the next six plus months. So maybe you can change a couple of people's minds during today's webinar, and have them support those low code platforms. No problem. No problem. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, but still I would say, you know, 55% uh, that you're talking about is still a significant number. I mean, they have looked at these platforms. They know they, they some are already using it. Some are going to be looking at it you know, in 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 uh, next few months. That's great because that's what you are. Th that's what the industry is talking about today. How can you accelerate? You know what you're doing rather than spending time in in more in communication. Or if you remember my first slide when I talked about twenty percent of the the monies that you're investing is going in producing code and developing application and deploying application. How can you make that 20% to 40% or 50% or even 60%? The whole thought process is leverage these platforms because when you drag and drop and create a text box or a, or a field on the screen and add a validation, you don't need developers to write code anymore. You can, you can democratize that with your citizen developers. And this is where your business and IT collaboration comes in handy. Eliminates these barriers of if just imagine if if business is communicating, I need these set of fields, I need these kind of validation, it's time consuming. They can do that themselves. They can help you accelerate some of those things. And you know, COVID has has created an environment for super acceleration, as simple as that. Every single organization, be a, be it small, be it big. We are getting requests from not-for-profit organizations who do not actually have money to do it, but they don't have a choice. They have to do it. And in fact, I just wanted to put a uh, uh, you know put a message out there. Uh, with Joget, we have a Tech for Humanity program wherein any not not-for-profit organizations or charity organizations who really are in the need can reach out to us. We are open source. Um, we do provide 
free licenses to some of those organizations so that they can also you know start their digital uh, digital journey it is not a want any more and if you look at the new normal new normal says anything that can be digitized will be digitized even the presence is digitized now, now with zoom and uh, and all and we are getting more and more custom to it right but if you are not looking at the journey uh, from industry standpoint what's going to happen next you if you do not change now you are going to be left behind in this digital journey the companies who have not planned or do not, uh, have not planned the funds to be allocated to their digital journey today they are going to be left behind and, and that's the that's the hard truth let's take a pause and take a look at we we talked about the containers we talked about citizen developer yes i want to do it but are there any real benefits to it let's take a closer look if you look at the container adoption and this is a survey again from gartner to talk about if there is a um um adoption of containers across various organizations and they have used the container technology this is what they are saying these are the benefits that they are communicating agility app dev productivity supporting modern architecture you know devops enabler i mean these are the key things that you want in your back pocket today these are the fundamental pillars of how you are going to be delivering your applications tomorrow right and and containers directly support that let's take a look at um benefits of citizen developers right we are enabling self service for business, business innovation that's the largest and the you know biggest advantage if you look at the innovation journey right you start with you know a very simple innovation cycle if you start with the ideation right you you have a concept you a business came up with the concept they have an idea they validate whether it's a valid idea or not it makes sense you are at a point wherein yes this makes sense i can create this kind of an application this will really help with the either customer adoption or um you know sales or or um you know operational efficiency whatever you you classify once you validate the idea the next biggest barrier is creating a prototype a lot of times the ideas die right at the validity point because either they are not able to showcase you know what benefits it brings or they are not able to quantify the 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 benefits just to get to a point wherein they can get the prototype funded if you can get the prototype funded a lot of times you are in, in a position to to really show the strength of the solution and then get the full funding for the project delivery right but if you are not getting funding for the prototype how can i still enable this innovation how can i still give legs to this innovation this is where the low code platform really comes into picture business can really leverage create these concepts and and go after some of these situations um you know i just wanted to share a really interesting incident we had a hackathon at carnegie mellon it was back in 2019 um, i believe uh, 2020 was a weird year we are not even counting that year <laughs> but um in in 2019 we did this session with you know set of students and gave them a business case on friday afternoon and they were supposed to build application prototypes by you know saturday afternoon and present their prototypes there were four teams with four people each two or three teams actually built an application working application that you can make sense of what is this you know concept that they are talking about or the solution that they were recommending you could see it in action and that's the power of of low code platform so if you look at you know the top benefit it's innovation um its ability to create you know these prototypes fast and and eventually creating the application or implementing the solution also improving business and it alignment that's the second most important benefit it eliminates this guesswork that the developer has to do what do you have in mind what, you know what kind of screens you have in mind what kind of process you have in mind it just tries to eliminate that and and you know again the third most important is create prototype and pocs for it to you know take over business might be able to create this idea and then you know hand it over to it folks as well 
these are some significant benefits when you're talking to you know when you're talking about application delivery innovation and speed to market and as i shared prototype and implementation is is the best way to leverage um you know some of these local platforms and and um i would say i mean this is where jogit really excels also and and couple that with the power of open shift wherein you can create infrastructure on demand you know perfect this is this is the environment that we need to accelerate now i've been talking about the acceleration um i've been talking about the journey to go fast how can we do that um let's take a closer look at the application development life cycle you know a typical life cycle is requirements design development deployment so on and so forth testing and then application release if you convert this into a agile life cycle these these activities happen at a much faster pace and a much smaller cycle as simple as that you do user stories for requirements you do you know um uh, quick implementations you validate with business move on to the next iteration that's the agile um, life cycle but in overall life cycle there are two major activities that you deal with one is the ones in the red ones which is the you know the environment creation deployment in that environment so on and so forth right and the second piece is this whole application development life cycle requirement design development testing and deployment application release if you look at open shift open shift is is a great um, you know container platform to accelerate your infrastructure journey right and joget is a is a platform to accelerate your application development journey so if you put you know both the both of these things together you you get a super acceleration right and you can save you know 60 to 70% of their time in application delivery creation of these environments you know if you are i i'm sure you remember those days when you you know requested a server then there is a network team that you know server ops creates the server network ops uh, teams you know put that on the network security team comes in and you know throws in their security stuff and all, oh, finally the developer gets a hang of here is the server where you can deploy just accelerate all that um you know in your application development life cycle with some of these tools and now when you get to application development which which takes majority of the time why don't shrink that cycle as well using the low code platforms and what you get is is absolutely you know fast paced environment wherein enables you for business and you know, innovation as well as delivery and i i i think what we will do today is take a time take some time to take a look at is this for real what we are talking about is that for real joget has a red hat certified container as well as a joget operator and um you know what we'll do is we will we'll take a look at what uh, we have on red hat marketplace or in open shift can i try open shift and joget together you know and we will see that in in less than you know 10 15 minutes we will go from no infrastructure to a working application that you can take a look at so what we will be doing is i mean you will find their um, container images in in red hat container catalog um, also you know the operator is available on the on on um, in open shift um, joget operator is available you can use the operator to create the joget environment and create you know leverage joget environment to create the applications as well and you know it's available on reddit marketplace as well if you are already open shift customer you can leverage these containers um, joget container and try building an application but let's take a pause and take a look at how it is done and we will go from as i said no infrastructure to a fully deployed working application in you know matter of minutes um let's you know go into some action Uh, I'll hand it over to um, Adrian, my colleague here. Adrian, if you want to take it over and share your screen and and you know walk us through um, how we can do this fast on OpenShift and Joget. Right, sure thing. Uh, thank you, Ravish. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. So um, hold on. Right, uh, I would like to get some confirmation that everyone can see my screen. Um. 
Ravish? Yeah. You can uh, see so it now. Can you... Yeah, I All can right. see your okay. screen too. Yeah, sorry. Okay. No worries. Thank you. Okay, so right, so I've logged into the um, I'm logged in as the cluster admin for the Red Hat OpenShift container platform here, as you can see, and the first thing that you see will be the overview here. Okay, so let's begin. So in order for us to install Joget, we'll need the Joget DX operator. The operator consists not only the Joget installation, but it also includes the web app server, managing the storage, uh, licensing, uh, exposing the relevant ports, etc. And so how do you get the Joget operator? It will be in the operators operator hub. So now I've already opened a tab with all the operators displayed in the second tab just to save some time. So let's have a look. Right, so here you can see a list of operators available from the community and the Red Hat partners. Um, we'll be using the search filter here to look for Joget. Uh, there's a few, so if you click on one of it, um, you just can you just need to click on install. So what happens is it'll pull the operator from the source, install, and subscribe to the cluster. This will make it available for the oops for the developer teams to self-service manage the product across deployment environments. Um, as if you, if you've noticed, uh, I've already installed one just to save time. And uh, we can see it in the installed operator here menu over here. Again, I've uh, opened another third tab, so you, um, just to save some time. So here you go, the install operators. Uh, now that the Joget DX operator is installed and made readily available for the environment, we are ready to deploy Joget. So I'm going to switch to the developer perspective. And by default, they will load all the projects um, for, and it will show the topology view. And I'll be creating a new project. Uh, for this, I'm just going to call it demo and click on create. So as it's a new project, it's going to be empty uh, with no workloads or no resources found. <laughs> OK. Now let's add Joget from the catalog. Uh, the catalog will display all the operators added from the cluster admin, which was um, shown previously. So let me cl click on this and just click on create. So there'll be a small setup screen here, but we can leave it by default and just create the instance of Joget. Right, so by clicking the uh, create button, it will actually redirect us to the topology view for this demo project. And it'll pop up an icon that represents the deployment. The, the color of the ring provides a visual representation of the phases of deployment as the color starts up, uh, as the container starts up, sorry. So from white to light blue and later on to blue. So if we can, if we can also drill down further to view the details of the deployment. So if you're wondering what's inside the Joget operator, you can see in the resources tab that it's uh, there's a pod running. Um, we can also scale this pod up and down here, um, but for demo purposes, we'll just stick to one. And um, it has exposed the ports as shown here. And it, uh, there's also a public URL to access the Joget platform here. So um, again, it also provisioned the storage and also handle the licensing as well. And also I think it contains the uh, JBoss uh, web app server, uh, web, yeah, web app server as well. Okay. so. Since this is running and we're waiting for it to complete, we can actually go on and uh, add a database as well. So we, uh, for Joget to work, we'll need a database. So we're going to click on Add and click on Database. So Joget supports various uh, RDBMS out there, uh, namely the major providers such as MySQL, MSSQL, Oracle, even MariaDB. Um, I'll pick MySQL for this and instantiate template. Right, so we we'll need to configure a bit. So you have to ensure that it's in the proper dem uh, project. Uh, let's see, we're going to name the database service as JokerDB, so it's easy to remember. Username, uh, password, root user password, as well as the database name. We'll be naming this as JWD. Oops, JWDB. Did this disappear? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. I think, yeah, there we go. Okay, right, so I'm gonna click on create. So what does this do? It's uh, 
it's going to create a blank database for Joget to use. As you can see, it's blue for Joget, so it's already active and the pod is running. So we're going to wait for a while for the Joget database, uh, sorry, for the database to deploy fully. All right. I do apologize. Um, yeah. This may take about a minute or two, actually. Yeah, there we go. It's already active. So now it's fully deployed. We can access the public URL by clicking on the Joget icon and go to resources and click on the link. Or we can use the URL shortcut over here. So when you click on it, uh, it will lead us to the database setup page. Um, yeah. So we'll need to key in what we keyed in the uh, MySQL. So there was Joget DB, JW is correct. Let's call it was Joget, password is Joget. And uh, we're going to be adding the apps, sample apps, as well as the sample users as well. So by clicking on save. So what's happening here is um, since we have a blank uh, database, MySQL database here, uh, the setup will actually initialize a new database called JWDB in the MySQL and create the necessary database tables uh, within for Joget to run. It will include um, the additional sample apps as well, and also the users. So this step will take a short while. So, um, um, Irin, just to quickly um, summarize what has happened so far is, you went into yeah. the environment, OpenShift environment, you created a, a Joget, um, you know, pod with Joget deployed. Correct. The deployment of Joget happened by virtue of using an operator, and same with the jo uh, the you know MySQL database MySQL. that created, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. You brought up the Joget environment and you connected that with the database that you created, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yep. And this isn't the same topology. Yeah. Yeah, we are at a point wherein the environment is now connected to the database and it's just coming up. Um, so correct. we can we can leverage the the environment. Correct. So as you can see here, it says uh, error forbidden. Um, no worries. Uh, actually, this is a JavaScript timeout. Uh, I believe it actually succeeded. Uh, it just took longer than expected for Joget to set up the DB. So if I just click on the logo here, it should bring us to the Joget platform where you'll be greeted by our app center, the landing page. So just give it a moment. This is where the uh, the app center is basically the um, the environment wherein you can now log into Joget and create an application, right? That is correct. Yep. So welcome to the app center. Now, as you can see, we already have some sample apps here. By clicking on it, uh, you will run the apps similar to the app launcher in your smartphone. So uh, Ravish, I guess we'll be creating a new app. Is that correct? Yeah. So All right. Irin, before we go there, uh, what has happened okay. right now is we went from no infrastructure to environment created with database behind the scenes um, that you will now leverage to create an application. That is correct. Right? So yep. why don't we go ahead and create an application? I think we have spent almost around, I would say, eight or nine minutes doing this. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we'll, now we'll be creating the app. Yep. Go ahead, please. OK, sure. So I've logged in as the admin, and uh, I'll be just clicking on the Design New App button. Um, since this is an app, so I'm just going to call it. Uh, do you have a specific app, Ravish, or just call it demo? Will do fine. Just, just call it demo. All right. Okay. Cool. So it'll bring us to the designer app, and then we can actually start building the app. So I guess we'll start with a new form. Um, I just want to call it a request. Let's call this request form. Oops, request form. And yeah, there we go. So when I click on save, it will bring me to the form builder. So this is where we actually build the forms. It's easy as drag and drop. Um, yeah, so let's just change this name, section name to something more meaningful. And uh, Ravish, maybe you can give me some uh, requirements in terms of what fields you're going to add. Sure. Um, why don't you? Why why don't we create a simple request application for um, you know prototype approval for businesses okay. we have been talking about? So let's say someone is submitting their name, their department, right. 
right name uh, department so i guess i'll use a select box with let's say department and i'll just choose the department options binder which is using the user management in joget for that right and do you have anything else in terms of um, let's add an amount um oh, amount okay budget amount budget. Right, so I'm going to change this a bit to look uh, the formatting style of the US. Uh, let's say two decimals with a prefix of a dollar sign. Okay. Right. And uh, let's say, um, you know, let's add a text area that says um, uh, justification. Justification. Right, here we go. Right, I guess that's uh, that'll do. Um, so I'll just be clicking on the preview button here. So this is just to see the preview of the form, just to get a feel how it's going to look in the actual environment. Uh, this is more to show of the form and the elements itself, for example, like the select box. And it's going to look a bit different once the UI treatment has been added via the user view. So I'm going to close the preview and uh, I'll be generating the, we're using one of the features in Joget, which is generate app. Oops, sorry, I forgot to save. All right, so let me save it a bit and I click on generate app. Um, so we're gonna, so this is basically a plugin where we can create templates. So I'm just gonna create a CRUD as well as an approval process that looks something like this. All right, and click on generate. And there you have it, it's done. So I'm gonna close this and close the form builder. And as you can see in the design app, they've added, uh, the app generator has helped edit the proper components for generating the CRUD as well as the approval process. So we can now run or launch the app either by clicking on the launch button here, or we can just refresh the app center and we'll see a icon called demo, right? So by clicking on this, so now we are live for the demo app. There you go. So these are the menus that was generated by the app generator. Um, I'm going to showcase on the uh, workflow that it's working. Yeah, so I'm just going to click on submit request form. So here's the form that I just created and I'll just give it a few names here. So right, finance budget, let's say 200, that'll do. Um, this is a demo. I'm going to click on submit. So when I submit, there'll be a task. It will be shown in the inbox. And I can see some of the details in the uh, uh, from the inbox, and I can just click on approval. And from here, we could just approve the form, the request. And yep, completed. So if we look at the CRUD when it's request form, you can see that yeah, that's the record that we just added. And and just for or to spice it up, um, Adrian, if I want a search filter and I want to rearrange, I want name in the you know, name first and then department, then budget and then justification. Can you rearrange that for me? Yep, sure, no problem. Uh, since I'm the admin, I have access to the admin bar here and it gives me to the uh, quick edit mode. I simply click on this component here. It will redirect me to the relevant uh, builder, which is a data list builder. And let's make the adjustments that you requested. Name, budget, department, justification, and add the name as the search filter. Let's click on save. Close the database builder and refresh. There you have it. It's done. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, so, so let's take a pause here. I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just take over the control to share my screen. Sure thing. If you want to stop sharing. Yep. Stop. Yep. So, so back to uh, you, Ravish. Thank you very much, Adrian. So just going back to the same topic again, um, you know, for for the demo, I just wanted to quickly highlight um, what we went through, what we saw right now. It was a journey from no infrastructure. We created a new project in in OpenShift. It creates, you know, in a kind of a pod for Joget. You deploy a database for Jogate, you deploy Jogate itself using the operators. You initialize the deployment so you can make them talk to each other, database and the, and, and the Jogate instance. And the, the last piece is creating the application. 
um, and that's what Adrian did. So we went from nothing to a fully working application in less than 15 minutes or so. That's the power of these platforms. That's where you start with nothing and you can get through all the infrastructure and, um, and building an application. And again, I mean, a lot of people ask these questions, can I build complex application with local platforms? Absolutely. Platforms like Joget help you build these applications at a very different scale altogether. You can do auto scaling with this. You can do, um, you know, all the modern, um, you know, things that you want to do with um, local platforms. You can do that. A quick highlight: um, Jogit Marketplace. Um, you know, you, you just like Reddit Marketplace, we have Jogit Marketplace. You can go download, you know, free applications from there. You can change it. There are plenty of plugins. You can change the look and feel. You can change how the user interacts with the application. There are plenty of options available on the marketplace. And um, you know, before um, I close, and I want to get to the question, there are some really, really good questions in the chat. I want to get to those. Um, but before I get to those, I wanted to share this story. I'm, I'm sure if, if you had a chance to look at this um, you know, bridge, if you will, if not, I'll just quickly share with you what this is. This is a Chaluchia Bridge. It's in Honduras. The strange thing about this is you will see this bridge is in the middle of nowhere. And it was not designed for this environment. What happened was there was a hurricane called Hurricane Mitch. The bridge was a masterpiece. Hurricane Mitch came, changed the path of the river, destroyed everything around the bridge change the complete environment, the bridge is still intact. These are our legacy applications. Some of the legacy applications that we have built works great. You know, those are masterpieces, but guess what? The environment has completely changed for you. Even though those applications work best, they may not fit into current environment. And that's, it's very hard to see this masterpiece that survived the you know the hurricane and yet not being used right and this is what is going to happen to your legacy applications so be prepared for this and you don't want to create something that that cannot change with the environment also you want to be able to you know create you know so called you know from gartner these days they're calling it so called the composable business applications so you can reconfigure them to be able to adapt to your business needs. I think it's time for questions. Um, why don't we get to the questions? <clears throat> All right, we have gotten some great questions in so far. Um, I do want to let the audience know that there's still about seven or eight minutes. If you've got a question, you can go ahead and use the question and answer tab and get it on in. And we'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, here's a great question from Tino who asks, how do you ensure governed data access to systems of record with citizen developers at Arise? Excellent question. And uh, you know, the, some of these tools, you know, like for example, Jogit, the, the citizen developers do not define the data sources. So you can control that, um, number one. And there are a lot of development that is going on for how you govern the application development with system develop, um, you know, citizen developers. Um, I, I will talk about Jogate for a moment. Uh, we are um, releasing some of the governance features, if you will, wherein, you know, for example, I'll, I'll give a you know, simple example. Let's say you created an application which is for uh, you know, customer data management. And um, what you are uh, what you want to do is you don't want everyone to start creating screens to be able to capture the customer data. It has to come from one channel, but it can be used at multiple um, you know, applications. These platform, uh, platform like Joget give you ability to embed those views into other applications so that the governance for the input or the source of data is being controlled by one team, but the usage of that data is, is being extended to other teams. So there are various ways to do this. Um, and and definitely, I mean, these these things can be achieved using the local platforms. Excellent. Okay, uh, so many great questions. Uh, here's one for you from Charles. He asks, "Do you recommend to segment application types for low-code applications, uh, citizen developer creations, in some way?" 
by audience, internal versus external, or establish a center of excellence with professional developers to assist and certify low-code apps prior to placing those into production? Very, very good question, actually. Mm -hmm. the, the, the COE aspect is always beneficial. <clears throat> create the guard rules and, and you create the, you know, um, how you want to govern the application development. But um, there was earlier a notion that the low code platform can only be used for internal application development. Not the case anymore. Customer engagement applications are also being created. So I don't see a barrier there. But what I see is, and I, I'll talk about Joget uh, for a moment here. We are an open source platform, very, very strong plugin architecture. This is where professional developers comes into picture to create those drag and drop features for your customers or for, your, for the business users or so-called citizen developer users. Citizen developers need not focus on the code, rather give requirements to you know, the professional developers. I need a plugin to be able to integrate with this application, which is you know, custom you know, uh, developed application. Or I want to be able to uh, create a plugin so I can see a tabular view of this, this data or a card view of this data. And professional developers can create that plugin, which is reusable across various applications. <clears throat> this is the pace of delivery you know, significantly increases over time. Once you create those blocks, you are now accelerating. And I would encourage, go to the marketplace. That's a perfect example of how developers can release these, you know, plugins as, as you know, add-ons. And citizen developers can consume those plugins for accelerated delivery. Excellent. Okay, great. Next question here uh, from Eduardo. Which are the main differences between Joget open source and enterprise license? Yeah, Joget open source license is, is basically a community edition. Um, it's a non-supported edition. It's basically for you to give it a try, get familiar with the platform. If you really want Joget in production, we encourage you to go ahead with the enterprise license. Obviously, there are a, a lot of additional features. Um, you know, it's just like OpenShift and Kubernetes. <laughs> you have a lot of enterprise features yeah. baked to uh, Joget enterprise edition uh, compared to open source. All right. Okay, great. So many great questions. And there is still time. If you do have a question for Ravish, go ahead and use your question and answer tab and we'll add it to the queue here. Next question from AJ who asked, does Joget meet FedRAMP requirements? Um, um, AJ, the, the FedRAMP requirement, uh, I mean, we have not been, um, we, we have not gone through the process yet. Joget is deployed on-prem, on-cloud. If you are deploying on-prem, you, you can get the um, ATO. Uh, in fact, US Department of Defense is already using Joget um, in their environment. Uh, they are running on you know, GovCloud. Uh, but yes, formally, if you look at, have we gone through the FedRAMP process? We are in process of doing that right now. OK. All right, great. All right, uh, next question from Mamadou. Is it possible to open the prototype live to the public and let the customer play with it? And how the security is how is security implemented to restrict access to the customers? The customer, uh, you can choose to enable customer to make these changes themselves also, but you can create a customer role that will not have access to change anything in the application. They will just be a public user of the application. If I understand that, question correctly, if you are creating an application for your customer and you want to give them a momentarily access wherein you want them to be able to make change and then lock it, you can do that uh, by, by switching their roles from a, a, you know user role to a developer role. All right. OK. Next question, uh, Spiros asks, how do I serve the enterprise app through a custom subdomain? Enterprise apps through the custom subdomain. I am assuming if you look at the app center that um, Adrian was showing, um, I am hoping what you're referring to is, can I create various domain mapping to those separate apps? You can do that as well. Uh, each app has a unique URL that it that Joget generates, you know, basically, and you can map those URLs to the domain or the subdomain that you want. Uh, but I also want to highlight that within within the app center, you can further classify the apps also as in categories as well. What you saw in app center itself is actually a Joget app that you can edit uh, once you install Joget. All right, all right, great. 
Let's see. We are about six minutes to the top of the hour. I think we have four have time for two or three questions more, and then we'll uh, start to wrap things up. Uh, Tiago asks, uh, can we implement microservices with JoeGet? Yeah, very interesting question. And um, I will say, you know, just to make you aware, anything you create in JoeGet, a form, a data list, anything you're capturing, a process, JoeGet has something called an API builder, where you can drag and drop, create, um, you know, services around whatever you have created. So if you think in terms of microservices, you can exp each form that you're creating, you can create a service um, you know, attached to each form or each process. So it is basically segmenting all your um, you know, screens and processes and data lists into separate services. You know, microservices, how you want to consume is the key. And for example, if I create a, a customer you know, capture information capturing screen, and you want to create a customer uh, microservice. Very easy to do that by by drag and drop and using API Builder. All right, all right, great. Here's another question for you: When we adopt a low code platform, do we get into vendor lock in? Uh, that's a question that we get a lot. Um, there is nothing called no lock in <clears throat> in anything that you're doing. Even if you're writing <laughs> Java code, there is a lock in to the Java. Can you change from Java to .NET? You can, it takes time. The question is, what do I want to do with my money that I have that is limited always within short period of time and get the maximum output and the business goals? Think about a three year horizon. You know, It's not, not a question of lock-in, it's a question of what you want to achieve in those three years with the money you have. You may find out later on that you know, a completely um, you know, technology landscape has changed new set of tools have come um, uh, in the market and you were worrying about vendor lock-in, you have to anyway change. So, you know, this is a question that you need to answer organizationally. Will I, am I going to spend 15 years on that platform or not? If the answer is no, uh, you really don't want to worry about the vendor lock-in. Okay. All right. We have time for one more question. Apasha asks, is it possible to install Joget on OpenShift CRC or OpenShift OKD platforms? Is it possible to um, install Joget on OpenShift CRC or OpenShift uh, OKD platform? Um, we have not tried that. Um, I would encourage, um, you know, give it a try. I am, I am not, um, um, I frankly don't know the answer to this question because we have not tried it, but definitely we'll explore and, and we can definitely share the information, what, what our findings are. Okay. OpenShift, uh, works on, on uh, OpenShift platform as well as Kubernetes. And if you have some kind of flavor attached to it, I'm, I'm expecting it should work. Okay. And I just, we just had a chat from Hugo on the back end who said, yes, we can CRC. So there yeah. you go. We got an answer for you. Um, okay, well, we're about two minutes to the top of the hour. So unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for questions. I think we got to all the questions, but if we didn't, please know that the folks at JoeGet are getting a copy of all the questions that came in. And I'm sure they'll be more than happy to follow up with you offline to get your question answered. Uh, also, a quick reminder to the audience that today's event has been recorded. So if you missed any or all of the event, you will have the opportunity to access it later on. Uh, following today's webinar, we will be sending out an email that contains a link to access the webinar on demand. And the webinar is also going to be living on the uh, devops.com web, web website. <laughs> it's easy for me to say. So you can always go look for it there. Uh, just go to uh, devops.com slash webinars and look in the on-demand section and it should be right there waiting for you. And guys, I, let's see. I apologize, but my little widget thing that that does the uh, the the drawing for the uh, Amazon gift cards has ceased to work uh, for me on this one, and I apologize. Let me just see. Yeah, it looks like um, I'm having a technical problem on my end. So, guys, I apologize, but we're not going to be able to do the Amazon gift card drawing for this webinar. Um, but if we will definitely follow up with the winners. Uh, we'll do it following the webinar when I get everything reset here. I think I have to restart my machine. Thanks. Okay. So, but we will definitely follow up with you guys and with, with, with whoever the, oh, actually it just popped up. I apologize for that. Um, our winners today, 
Uh, we have uh, James B. Congratulations, James. Uh, Lawrence C. Congratulations, Lawrence. Uh, Charles L. Congratulations, Charles. And Greg M. Congratulations, Greg. So we will be following up with all four of you by email to get your Amazon gift card over to you. And, and I apologize for the little technical glitch there, but we got it going. Um, <laughs> Ravish and uh, Jordan, thank you so much uh, for your presentation today. Lots of great stuff. I really do appreciate your uh, your time and your uh, expertise. As always, uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Charlene. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yes, I also want to thank the audience for joining me today. This is Charlene O'Hanlon, and I am signing off. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. Thank you.